morning and welcome. I do have a brief update for you. Dan Rutan is now in Horn Hill, if anyone would so care to visit him there. So, my name is Neil Benbrook. For those of you who don't know me, I've been a member of this church for, I guess, 12, 13 years. It's been a while since I've been up here, so uh, I am making my return today. And I would just like to say to you, anyone who was at the Lancaster show yesterday, there is no way I can follow up that message that we received. <laughs> so for all of you, you can just reflect on that and say, Amen. <laughs> Everyone else that couldn't make the show will have to make do with me. So with the message title of LOL, and the way it's used in our modern world, I'm assuming you're all thinking right about now that I'm going to do a little bit of a stand-up comedy routine to make you all laugh out loud. If you are thinking this, you couldn't be farther from the truth. The LOL is actually about the least or the last that exists around us. And perhaps we should add a few more L's to that list for the, the lonely and the last. I chose to use this entire reading from Matthew 25 today, which Terry thanked me for very much. It, it is a long reading, but I typically don't believe you should take pieces of scripture just to fit them to a message. And this reading in particular really needs to stay its, in its entirety. There are two pieces that reflect upon different groups of people, but they interact with one another as well. The very beginning starts with Jesus on his throne, and all the nations are in front of him, and Jesus begins to separate everyone as a shepherd does with their goats and their sheep. Simply put, he's separating the people who followed his teaching versus the ones who didn't. He invites us to his kingdom, the sheep, were the ones that cared for him when he was thirsty, hungry, and in need of shelter. He continues by telling us that they were the ones that cared for him when he was sick or in prison. Now, as we know, he was saying that anyone who served his children in need was also serving him. In verse 40, Jesus tells us, I tell you the truth, whatever you did for one of these brothers or sisters of mine, you did for me. Now, the second half of this reading deals with the goats, or the ones who did the reverse of the sheep, by not giving food, shelter, drink, or compassion to those in need. These people turned to Jesus and said, When did we see you hungry, thirsty, sick, or in need of shelter? And Jesus' reply is given in verse 45 where he says, I tell you the truth, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Now, is there any doubt that Jesus calls on us to try to love and try to understand each other? Is there any doubt that Jesus calls on us to care for the yellow wells of our world? Each and every day we go through life never really seeing the yellow wells of our society. Sometimes it's because we honestly don't recognize them. So, perhaps we all need to think about who these people are. They come from all walks of life. Some because of how they were raised. Some because of the lifestyle. But sometimes it's because of one event in their life that changed everything. They may be the sick, the poor, or people just down on their luck. Often, they are people with little or no support from family and friends. They may be the people in prison or someone that has been injured or fallen ill with no way to find, no way, to find a way out of their despair. They may be the people in prison or someone that has been injured or fallen ill, as I said. But there's also an old saying that many of us have used over the years, which I'm sure most of you know. The one that goes, if not for the grace of God, there go I. And while I don't believe that God looks down at us and says, you will be blessed and you will not be, I do know that the difference between having and not having is often because of things completely out of our control. Now, I'm just as guilty as most of us when it comes to not always seeing these people. And there are reasons that we don't see them. But these reasons should never be excuses. Perhaps what we all need to do 
is to retrain ourselves. We train ourselves to not only recognize them at times, but to accept them for whomever they are. I have far too little personal insight to tell us what to do or how to do it, but I can point out some things that I've learned over the course of my life. We all recognize the panhandlers in places like New York City or Chicago or Philadelphia, but it's so much more complicated than that. See, because some of the reasons we don't recognize this, they often move in a world that we don't know. And for lack of a, a better name, I look at it as being a, a twilight or a shadow world. A world which operates outside the lives we live. And even when we do see them, we often look away. Or worse yet, we don't even see them at all. Maybe sometimes we see them, but instantly form opinions. Opinions that they are rude, mean individuals, or people out just to use the system. Now, in all honesty, sometimes we don't recognize them because they look just like you or me. In fact, they may be sitting right next to you. They may be in the pew behind you or in front of you. They may be some of the wealthiest people we know. However, they can all still be an LOL. We need to remember anyone who may be lost or lonely. And still other times, we do see them. But sadly, we respond to them as the Romans and Jews responded to the leper colonies. I guess when we do this, we can be described as one of the ills, the spiritually lost. Most of us have probably come through life being taught stereotypes by parents, friends, and sadly, yes, sadly, sometimes even the church family. The bottom line is, most likely none of us have ever lived our lives exactly as Jesus has called on us to do. You see, we're human. And because of that, none of us are perfect. And with that said, many of us have been lost and lonely at times. And if so, we are certainly members of the Yellow Well Club. If not because of needing something physical, but because we may be missing something much more important. Missing something in our spiritual lives. Now I'm going to give you some examples of people my friends or I have talked with over our lives, or that we've just observed in our lives. My intent is to not talk about things I've done or my friends have done, but to get us all to think about things that we've seen in our life or responded to or didn't respond to. Often when we see someone that is in need, we don't do anything. We just turn away, turn aside, don't speak, don't act. And sadly, as I reflected on this thought, I realized that a list of my own shortcomings in this case would be longer than my message is today. Now, a friend of mine spent several afternoons in social services trying to help a friend navigate the system to obtain the benefits that they needed to survive. And he told me it was a truly enlightening experience, and then he went on to tell me this story. He said, as I sat there, I watched people come in to get help. People struggling with all forms of health issues, physical, psychological, addiction, and so on. And he said many had no idea how to navigate the system. And they needed the help of the people that worked there, but they also found help in another way. Because the process in itself can be stressful and even humiliating. And depending on the person, it can also be stressful for the workers that were there trying to help them. Like any job, there are some employees that are helpful, and there are others that may be less than helpful, he said, which adds to attention. He said he witnessed both types of employees and clients, and he could see where it was a two-way street. Many of the clients would be obnoxious and, and nasty, but as a whole, they sat there offering help to complete strangers as they tried to help each other find their way through the system. He said many people look at the people seeking help to, to get something from nothing as he shared his story. He said while he was sitting there, he saw a mother with two children come in to get a Thanksgiving turkey. And when, he saw how, when she saw how big it was, he said that 
she asked for something smaller. And they didn't have any smaller turkeys. And because she didn't need a big bird, she was going to leave. They told her they could give her a chicken, which was smaller, and she opted to take that. And she gave them the reason why, when they asked her why she, didn't, why she was going to leave. And she said, I don't need a large turkey. It's just my daughter and me. So I wanted to leave the bigger turkey for a larger family in need. Now after listening to this story, my question to myself was, do we all think that the world would be a much better place if we all adopted this woman's attitude? Many people struggle with the concept of who is truly in need and who's not, but does it really matter? Doesn't Jesus tell us that we should not judge others? Especially when we don't know their story. And as many of you know, our church has served in a local mission for, for years that was called the Bread of Life. And we would serve meals on a Saturday to members of the community that are in, in great need. Now along with the food, we would offer, offer to pray with them, deliver a small message each week, and sometimes we would just sit and talk. And one of the challenges for people coming to help for the first time was learning that you can't judge who is in need and who is not. You see, often they don't need food, but what they do need is friendship and prayer. And usually when a guest came looking dirty and disheveled, it was easier for people to see them as someone in need. The same was true of a guest that came with an obvious physical ailment. But when it was an emotional or psychological issue, it was harder for a lot of people to see the need. And often, these guests were the hardest to serve. Sometimes, as I said, they could be obnoxious, nasty, rude, unthankful, and often, they could be scary to the people who were helping. These people are truly members of the lost, least, and last society. But on the other hand, on the other hand, they were often some of the nicest people when they received the help that they needed. And as an example, we had a man who came for years and was often one of these people who was fit, fit into the rude and nasty, unthankful category. But one day he showed up and he asked to sit and talk with the team member. Someone spent about 90 minutes that day with him and they learned a good part of what his story was. And what stuck with all of us the most was, not when he said thank you that day for the first time for the food, but rather how he was thankful for a chance to talk and apologize for all the weeks he had in advice. You see, his doctors had finally found a medication that took away his demons and helped him to be coherent. Sadly, I've seen him on the streets since then, and he either stopped taking his medication, or as very often is the case, the medication is no longer working, and he has melted back into his previous state. There often isn't much as we can do as individuals in this case, but at the very least, when we do see a person like this, pray for them. And pray for them not necessarily because you know them, but pray for them because you don't know them, and you don't know their story. Some people judge others based on appearance, while quoting Jesus about not judging each other. Now, an example of, of this is about a man that was a wealthy member of the local community. Now, this is a story I'm sure you've all heard over the years of different sermons, and it, it has been passed along with many people, but in this case, I knew the people in this congregation, and I fully believe the accounts of their story that they gave. There was this member that felt his, he was fairly wealthy in the community, and he felt that his church family was hypocritical about serving the poor and the needy. So one Sunday, he decided he would show up with a false beard, a wig, dressed in dirty rags, hadn't bathed for quite a few days, and kept his head down, and he sat down in the back row of the church. Now this immediately set things into a tizzy. Because all the people that sat there for years felt the need to get up and move because of this gentleman. Now, he was proven wrong to a degree. There was one person in that congregation 
that changed her scene, went and sat with him, invited him downstairs to the fellowship hall, offered him food, drink, and conversation. Fellowship hall, fellowship, isn't that what we're called to extend to everyone, whether we know them or not, no matter what they look like? Now granted, it's not always easy to tell who the LORs, LOLs are as we go through life. We had a man that always came to Bread of Life impeccably dressed. And the reaction by many people to his outward appearance was that he, he didn't need help. Look at the clothes he's wearing. He doesn't need free food. But reality is a whole other story. His reality was that he had lost everything in life, except, as he put it, his dignity. You see, the way he always looked so well-dressed was simple. He had two pairs of dress clothes. He'd wear one while he washed and ironed the other. This was his routine day in and day out, a routine that enabled him to keep his dignity. And many years ago, I was a member of a, a young adults group, and as you can tell, that was many years ago. But we were approached by the mission committee to take part in the local mission outreach. There was a veteran of the Korean War and his wife that needed assistance. And to give you a little background, Mr. D was wounded in the war, and it was very common back then. He had to have a metal plate to replace part of his skull. And over time, the metal plate started causing problems, and he started to lose the use of his body. And when our first when our group first became involved with Mr. and Mrs. D, he had lost the use of his legs, but was rapidly losing the use of his arms, being able to turn his head, and his speech. Now, obviously we were there to help Mr. D. But, when we initially asked several people to go, to go to their home one night a week to help her with the uh, getting Mr. D into bed, and his sister with the sponge bath and changing his bandages. Mr. D was pleasant and very thankful for the help. But Mrs. D was another story. She was often unthankful, often very rude to us, very rude to our team. But as time went by, she requested us to come over earlier each night and to watch Mr. D's favorite show with him. And we still remember that it was Hawaii 5 -0. That was one highlight of the week. So we started going over earlier just to sit and watch the show and to talk with them. And over time, Mrs. D mellowed somewhat. And she began to ask us to fill in on other nights when someone canceled. However, she was still very critical of what she termed our hippie appearance. Now, when Mr. D faded away, our team lost touch with Mrs. D. But when we heard of her passing, we went to the services and we talked with Mr. and Mrs. D's daughter. It was a true time of enlightenment for us. You see, we found out while Mr. D enjoyed our company, it was really Mrs. D, as nasty as she could be, that wanted us to come over early and more often. According to her daughter, she loved to talk with us and she truly appreciated our group how we helped her, not just on our scheduled nights, but on the nights that someone else would cancel. And as her daughter filled us in, she often checked to see if we were available and called other people to tell them they weren't needed that night. She told, as I said, she told her daughter we were a highlight of her week. And I guess we were there to help Mr. D. But as we found out, Mrs. D was many of the unrecognized LOLs as well just not quite as recognizable. Now there are times when we are all among the lost, the least, the last, and the lonely. We are all not easily recognized, so each day we need to pray for the guidance, understanding, and compassion to see each other as we truly are. If we all have or will be part of the LOL Club at some time, May we all approach life the same way. When we see a person in obvious need, may we not judge, but instead help in any way that we can. When a need is not obvious, 
Let us treat everyone the same with love and grace. Let us pray. Lord, may we all learn to live our lives in love. Guide us to be like the woman at social services that didn't take more than she needed so someone in greater need would have it. Uplift us so we may honor the man with two pairs of clothes by allowing each other to maintain our dignity. May we accept each other whether dressed in rags or fancy banquet clothes. Lord, you came and walked amongst us to share your love. May we all learn to share that love with others. Blessed God, you gave us grace and forgiveness every day of our lives. We pray for open hearts that will allow us to share that grace with others as well. Amen. <clears throat>